Basically from Mysore, Karnataka. So my footballing experience, I've been uh, playing football uh, since my sixth standard, fifth standard school times. There was one coach who used to teach us, and uh, we could see him being really passionate about the game. We didn't had any idea how the game is played and all. So, but by seeing his passion, we thought, okay, this is game is something different, and which has been. Uh, uh, like which tells you more about how you have to play, how how beautiful it is. All right, hi, this is Jana here. Uh, so for my footballing journey started uh, slightly more later than Praveen. I started around eighth or ninth grade. So this is when I used to play uh, cricket quite regularly before. So then uh, I was quite fat and quite overweight as a kid. And then I thought I would want to choose a sport that would make me more fitter. So. Uh, at that time, I felt football was a more fitting sport in terms of like pop culture as well, right? Everybody is like quite fantasized about your stars like Beckham, Zidane, Figo, and they were personalities that you could derive inspiration from. Karthik, if you think you cannot reach him, cover that angle for him to score, the stop scoring that goal. So there's a little bit of delay. Force that one more second, one more second, buy one more second for your team to come back. Uh, about me, I think for me it's uh, constantly changing, just like how the game is always changing, you know, how the game was before the game is today. I feel it's quite different, so I try and derive inspiration from a lot of different managers. Obviously, back in the days there was an Alex Ferguson, Jose Mourinho, Arsene Wenger. But I feel if we still try to coach in those principles, like now the new players might not be catered to it. In case you have been watching the documentary Beckham as well. So it's important that we keep catering to the current generation. It's easier to complain that, okay, they are not like before, but in the end, they are the future, right? And we need to ensure that we are trying to develop the future the best. Our generation was more about more real love, real passion towards the game. It was, it was passion first, then, okay, then we think about career, everything and all. So now, our generations are more about uh, thinking of, can we make it as a career or like, uh, is it like is it a money making business? That kind of approach, but I'm not telling it's wrong. Uh, but that is what it is needed. But if you are really into it, you should have real passion for it. Boys, can you all? What did I tell you? Start from the blue line. Blue line. Start from the blue line. Your play. Assess the situation and go. Don't go blindly. Cover the angle of approach. Angle of approach. Yes. Cover the angle of approach. Good job. Much better. So in terms of accountability, what happens is in previous, like the level of players who could even think about playing football is quite less, right? So then you're more accountable to, you know, what I've got this opportunity, my parents have invested certain amount of effort, I've got this freedom, I want to make the most of it. So irrespective of how the training setup is or how the coach is or how the club treats me, I would try to still make the most out of it. But now the opportunity are a lot, right? The number of clubs that are there are a lot. The lot of people have opened up about sports as an opportunity. So your level of accountability is reduced. Okay, you know what? This club's giving me this much. You know what? That club's giving me that much. So I might as well choose that. So now a lot of lifestyle and services are given more importance rather than the focal point of what the sport is supposed to be, which is telling about the real passion and the real actual structure about why the sport is played. Hey, Ayla! Come cover here! Ayla! Arsenal has got beaten, you have to come for cover. They have lost too many goals because of the same mistake. You have to come for cover. If we don't do it in SSC, then big ground, there's no chance we'll do it. You have to inculcate the behaviors here. So in my one of my projects after us, uh, there was a player called Bhaskar. He came in when he was about some 90-95 kgs. And like even his friends wouldn't call him for the pickup games, like a seven-a-side match, pickup games that you play. They wouldn't call him. And he came at a quite bad state. He was like, I don't know, I went with the wrong friends, now I smoke up, I started smoking and all that and I don't feel myself anymore and I feel I've lost interest in everything. And I told him like, you know, you stick to the process, just see if, if you uh, feel that this sport is inspiring you to do something. And today he tells me like, you know what, I used to be like sad that I'm not going to play with them and now he doesn't like going and playing with them anymore, right? Because like he's over that level, he's improved himself so much. So from the bottom batch, he went on to be the elite team captain of the bats and he got selected for the A division team, reduced by 20-25 kgs, was the fittest guy ever, had great communication skills and it's all because he understood the priorities of a life, good lifestyle. 
So considering the fact that this is a contact sport, so injuries are bound to happen. So, but so as uh, Jana rightly mentioned, prevention is one of the key areas which coaches and players need to understand. So when we talk about prevention, it's about how you activate yourself for the game and how you strength yourself. Recovery is also one of the part of it. When we say recovery, it's not just eating full amount of uh, protein or uh, good amount of carbs and all. So it's about more about how you take care of yourself. So sleep, wellness, how you take care of yourself and how, the, what activities you indulge in. It's also taking care of the player psychologically as well. The fact that you should, I've, I've probably we have done mistakes in the past, right? Because sometimes you're understaffed. We need to take care of the football part of it. But it's also important that we psychologically keep that player quite motivated the fact that listen I'm waiting for you you will come back or ensure that you buddy him up with about two three players saying listen can you just take care of him when he's inside try and spend more time with him make him enjoy the life outside football as well so that way emphasis also is something that I've been consciously trying to do right that's a great attitude but if now if I improve myself by 20 percent say for example I improve my shooting by 20 percent but what is the use of it if my teammates cannot use that now I improve my shooting, I'm going to work on my shooting, 20 minutes I practice shooting, I think I'm better at shooting. But what is the point if, if I'm not going to get the ball to shoot from my teammates when I want it, right? So more than improving on yourself, which will naturally happen as a player, try and improve the chemistry between you guys. When do you want the run? I feel like I want to coach all the way till the top. If not, like as a youth coach, I feel like my main aim right now is to provide at least one player for the country. I know that I'm confident enough that I have the resources that I can deliver and to make a player play for the country and also I'm part of environments now that can facilitate it. it has, they have good equipments, good training structure, good amount of focus about the right things. So I'm quite confident that that's my current aim now. Either I coach for the country or I raise a player that will play one day for the country. I want to see my country playing the World Cup. So when like very small countries with small, very small population play uh, World Cups, so I mean, being the worst country and with the population, what we have and the talent we have, definitely we will be. At least in my lifetime, I want to see my country play in the World Cup. <laughs>